The Global Slavery Index of 2016 puts India as number one in the issue of human trafficking. The reason why the trafficking issue is so huge in India is because of a system that believes that men are created differently. Uh, and so the Dalit person and the tribal person in India is very, very vulnerable to the whole issue of slavery and modern day trafficking. A Jogani literally translates into a servant of the goddess. This is a religious and social form of prostitution where young girls are dedicated to be married to the goddess. Traditionally, they would be participating of the rites and rituals, cleaning the temple, etc. But over time, they've actually become nothing but straightforward sex workers. And the Jogini issue is then just an entry point into India's well-organized sex trafficking industry under the guise of religion. They are viewed as it's their destiny to be used as commodities to serve the sex industry. I will never, ever forget sitting in that room with those 15 Jogini girls. Those girls are required to service the men of that village at a moment's notice every day of the week. And seeing just the way they carried themselves, the defeat, as one girl cried, just speaking of how she has no choice, there's no there's no option for her. It was the most helpless feeling in the whole world to walk away from that, not knowing what the answer and the solution is for that village. The biggest oppression I think with these Jogani women is just the Indian culture, that their religious beliefs are so intertwined in their culture. So what I would consider these heinous acts that they do with these gals, in their eyes, it's a blessing from God. So overcoming that thought process, that spiritual belief, I think is the most difficult task at hand. I just saw such a void there of the love of Christ, honestly. Nobody had a perceived value of being the child of the one true God. And so that is why I feel so strongly about the work that Destiny Rescue is doing, because if there's an answer to the systemic problem, it's the love of Christ. And if we can get behind people that are bringing the love of Christ into those villages and into those communities, then that's where we want to pour resources. We're really treading carefully in the way we're operating in the country of India. We are very mindful that removing these children is not the solution. It's an immediate result, but we are looking at it holistically and, and we're looking at ways that we can bring health to the community long term. That's not going to happen overnight. It is going to take a lot of time. So the Jogini girl traditionally is dedicated as young as five or six. She is then officially married off to the goddess when she reaches puberty, so it's about 12 or 13. At that time after she's married, she's then offered to the highest bidder in the community. Very often a girl's mother will be present with her the first night she's violated and abused. It is quite shattering to hear about how the child feels betrayed by their family and after a whole night of abuse, when she goes back to her mother, her mother tells her this is your destiny, this is what you were born for, realizing that there is nobody who will actually protect you, that you are not really human, you don't have the right to be protected by your own parent. No little girl says, when I grow up, I want to give up my body to men. That's no little girl, I don't care what country you live in. It's not the desire of her heart to lay down and, and endure that type of abuse and treatment. Bottom line, no matter what country I've visited, no matter what country I've seen trafficking in, there's always the underlining commonality of poverty somewhere in there. There's such a lack of economic opportunities and so sending your daughter into the Jogini system or into other forms of trafficking is the only sustainable livelihood opportunity for those families. What I love is that Destiny Rescue really does look at them individually. How do we get underneath the problem here in this community and create a relevant solution? We don't want to be placing people who remain in the community more at risk than they already are. We actually have hired rescue women who are working in the community alongside us. So while we're removing children who are currently at risk, 
We do have team in place who can continue working with the community in their current situation with the goal of equipping them with the knowledge and empowering them to be able to stand up for themselves. So Destiny Rescue really has to become agile and have really good solutions and problem solving for how they can serve the girls in this area versus the girls in this area. So Destiny Rescue is quite simply an organisation that we exist to end child sexual slavery in our lifetimes. We do a lot of prevention trying to ensure kids never get stuck in the sex trade, but sadly obviously some do so we can't ignore that so we have rescue teams that go into the red light areas and we find ways of getting them out. And then obviously after the children have been rescued, we provide aftercare. So we are a um, Christian organisation, so presenting the gospel to the kids is, is key for us and I believe it's a big part of why we see such a great success rate, um, the girls healing and not returning to the sex trade. To walk into the home for the first time in India, completely vacant, and to be able to stand in that home and pray over it together and anoint it and just pray for the people and for the girls that God would bring into that home over time. And then to go to that village and see those faces and connect with those eyes and be so much more intentional coming home over the prayers of what girls God would put in that house. At this point right now, there's 30 girls now in that house. So to know that we stood there, we prayed over it. We, you know, prayed that God would fill those rooms and that they're so quickly filled is such a blessing. I'm so proud to be partnered with Destiny Rescue and what they're doing there. Well, I think it's very, very profound what is going on through rescuing these girls in these homes and giving them vocational skills, advocacy, economic empowerment, psychological support, emotional help, and a worldview that views them as equal. When the girls initially came in, they believed that they just wanted to be safe. They didn't think they had abilities in themselves to do anything better. Uh, after a couple of months of training, they have big dreams, they want to do bigger things, you know. So you can see the transformation that's happening even over a short period of time. It's a commitment to seeing their lives transformed and I think that's happening through these shelters. So Damsel's Hope is continuing Mindy's vision of serving along in every country that Destiny Rescue is in. And what I appreciate so much about Destiny Rescue is that they're willing to sit with us and come to the table and say, what solutions do you have for this community? Because we now have a heart towards it. We believe that God's called us here. So what is your plan and how can we help in it? And that we can sit together and decide, this is how we're gonna partner and this is how we can have impact. I personally find it very encouraging that you guys, as you grow, you want to grow what you do with us and um, support more and more girls. So. Um, I want to thank you guys personally and um, also thank all the Denzel pros for everything that you guys do as well, so um, huge thanks. The thing about Damsel is regardless if it's Destiny Rescue or all these other amazing organizations, our mission is to continue to be the voice of the oppressed and be the guardian to help those who are in need. When we left that room with the Joginis, we were aware that they didn't have a voice. They sat there and told us they knew that people didn't know, and we promised when we were leaving that we would be that voice, that we would bring that back, that I would share what the reality of their day-to-day -day is. It is actually happening, and it's our jobs, not just to put protection in people's hands, not just to be the voice of awareness, but to be the voice of those that cannot speak, the voice of those that are being trafficked, that are being abused, and that are being marginalized. She's the most voiceless person on earth. And so I think around the world you can be her voice and you can advocate for her.